and welcome to the Bethel Church Podcast, located in the heart of the Black Hills. Our focus is to live, grow, love, and serve for the sole purpose to make Jesus known. This, um, I got an Eve story I want to start out with this morning, if I can. <laughs> Yesterday I was, uh, or Friday, we were at um, the store, for whatever reason, we were going, and and uh, she has her, she has some new shoes on, and she has a dress, you know, that kind of thing. She's girly, and so we get out of the car. And as soon as we get out of the car, open the door, and she steps out, and she looks, and to her direct, eyes, I mean, vision sight, is a gigantic water puddle, <laughs> right? And I feel so bad for the kid because she just wants to have fun, like we all do, right? So she goes, a puddle! Like, I mean, just as loud as she could, right? And I looked at her and I went, no. <laughs> and she went, she goes, okay. <laughs> I felt so bad for her. I almost wanted to go just throw her and push her down in the puddle, but um, that probably wouldn't have been good either. But uh, I, there's a reason I told you that story and you'll figure it out in just a few minutes, all right? On May 2nd of this year, just a few weeks ago, um, I was having some prayer time, and God gave me this vision. He showed me something about the church, about our church, and I wanted to take today, since we're kind of in that, that period of time where next week's Father's Day, which is going to be a great time, so don't miss that. Next week's Father's Day, last week we were, something was going on different, and we had this one little week here. We're, we're not in a sermon series, but... I need to share something with you. So I figured this would be a good time. So I want to share with you what was kind of given to me by the Lord. And I want to expand on it some. I shared this a little bit when we had a prayer and worship night. But I want to kind of go into a little bit uh, deeper uh, explanation of things. So on May 2nd, the Lord gave me this, this, uh, this vision, this idea, this thought, this, this picture of where he's taking the church and where we as a church need to go. And he led me to a piece of scripture found in Ezekiel chapter 47, which I'm going to share with you in just a minute. On May 18th, okay, so you have May 2nd, then you have May 18th, just a few weeks later, and God does this sometimes. If if you're not sure about the whole uh, vision, dream, uh, prophetic type stuff, God does this sometimes. Sometimes he'll give you bits and pieces to see how you react, and then he'll give you the rest of it so that you can finish off what he's saying. You understand what I'm saying? I'll give you a little bit here to see if you're going to walk in faith, if you're going to step out into faith that I'm giving you right now, and then later on, you can, I'll give you the rest of it. He, he works that way at times. And so that's what he did in this time. He, he gave me the rest of it on May 18th. As a matter of fact, what was going on, we were in this room, and we were having our Wednesday at 1130 every week prayer time that we have in this room. Everybody's invited. Everybody, I want to invite everybody. If you have a time, if you're on your lunch break, come in here and pray. Have this moment of prayer. How many know that prayer is going to, what's going to bring revival? Amen. Nothing else. Nothing we do. More lights is not going to bring revival. It's going to be the prayer. It's going to be reaching out to the heart of God. So on May 18th, during this Wednesday prayer time, he showed me the rest of it. So Ezekiel 47, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If not, it'll be on the screen behind me. It's not real lengthy, but it's a little lengthy. It's about 12 verses, but I want to share this with you, and I want you to listen carefully, okay? The man brought me back to the entrance to the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate facing east, and the water was trickling from the south side. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. Verse five, he measured off another thousand But now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. A river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. 
When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters the Dead Sea. That's key, okay? Listen to that, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to Inglame. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and the marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both sides of the riverbanks. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. I believe this when it comes to revival, and and we've been talking about this for a while, I believe that there's going to be a a really strong move in the next great revival, great awakening that God sends of healing. It's going to be a great move of that. And it's going to be, I'm not talking just physical, I'm talking about spiritual, mental, you're going to see people break free. You're going to see freedom take place in people's minds. I believe that. There are parts to this vision that I want to share with you because it goes deeper than just the picture of what the church is to be to the world. It also opens the depths of each of our souls personally. To truly attain all that God has for us, we have to surrender. You have to. As the river in Ezekiel's vision was measured, if you notice, it led him to deeper waters. Your spiritual experience with God is the same way. He is leading you and our church to a deeper relationship with him, a deeper knowledge of him, a deeper commitment to his will, and a deeper fellowship with him. That's where we're going. That's where God is taking us. When you begin this journey, you're ankle deep. Jesus, save me. Awesome, I'm saved. I'm walking in the ankle deep water. Salvation is the greatest thing you could ever receive in your life, but it doesn't end there. Because you got saved when you were five years old doesn't mean anything if you're not growing in your faith. It's fine to get saved as a kid. Wonderful. But where are you now? Are you in the same place you were when you were five years old spiritually? Because if you are, you got to check your growth. you got to check salvation. you got to look and see if this really is where you're at or where you're supposed to be. He brought you out of sin, but he leads you from there. He leads you. He don't bring you out of sin to leave you on an island and say, fend for yourself. There's more to being saved than just getting saved. Does everybody understand that? There's more to getting saved than just being saved. There's growth. The next level that Ezekiel was taken to was the knee-deep level. This represents a life that is learning dependence on God. It's the person who prays and their lives are filled with faith. Those on this level know the power of the river. Okay, understand this. When I'm ankle deep walking through the river, it doesn't do anything to me. When I'm knee deep, I'm starting to feel it a little bit. Right? You ever been in a river before? You start feeling it a little bit on knee deep. God calls us to depth. And throughout scripture, water is actually significant. So I want to take a minute and kind of talk about water. In Ephesians 5.26, it says that water sanctifies, or it sets us apart, and it cleanses us, that he might sanctify and cleanse her, speaking of the church, with the washing of water by the word. In 2020, right when I became lead pastor, God just, he spoke two things to me, and he said, I want you to focus on my character and my word. If you remember, I told you guys that. Focus on my character and my word. We cannot forsake the word of God. We cannot water it down. We can't take away from it. We can't add to it to make it kind of go with where society and culture want us to go. We have to speak it in truth and boldness, and who cares about the consequences of it? 
That's what we have to be. That's what the church has to be if we truly want to see an awakening take place in our country and our world. And the character of God, this is the character of God right here, the altar. We cannot forsake the altar. The time when people come for repentance, when people come to just meet Jesus face to face, there's something about an altar that we can't forsake. The flow of water spiritually represents cleansing. So Ezekiel is experiencing a cleansing, and the cleaner and holier that he becomes, the deeper the water gets, okay? The depth of the knowledge of God and the relationship we have with him will grow the deeper we get. In Ezekiel's vision, the word of God is flowing from the altar, out of the temple, into the nation of Israel. This is what we're seeing here. This is the vision that Ezekiel is seeing. He's seeing the water from the altar, from the sanctuary, is flowing out. In our generation, we are forced to touch lives and do ministry outside of our normal traditions. Things like social media, all that kind of thing are, are important. The water is a representation of the Spirit of God. Now, John 7, 37 through 39, listen to this. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, he was shouting this, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. So the closer we get to Jesus, the deeper the waters we get, and the relationship with God grows, the more it will also come out of us. Remember, you're either a river or a swamp, right? Understand what I'm saying? You're either a river, either the Spirit of God is flowing out of you, or you're a swamp, you're stagnant, and you're starting to stink. So what do you do? You have to begin to let that life water come through you. Looking back at Ezekiel's vision, when we're knee deep, we often think that's deep enough because we can still feel the power of the water. We, we think it's okay when we're knee deep because we can still feel it. But then he calls us deeper to not be satisfied with our present level. Are, are you satisfied with where you are with God? Will you ever be, this side of heaven, satisfied with where you are with God? No, Billy Graham wasn't satisfied with where he was with God. That's why he prayed. That's why he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed. Someone asked him, they were doing an interview when he was doing all his crusades, matter of fact, and he went up to him, a reporter went up to him and said, Mr. Graham, what is the secret? What is the secret of your success? And they were expecting this big, elaborate answer. And he looked at him and he said, prayer. He said, no, wait a minute. You're not understanding what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, how are you getting all these people to come to your crusades and seeing such success when you speak to them? That's what we're asking. And then the reporter thinking, okay, well, maybe this is a little bit clear. And he said, prayer. Wait a minute, Reverend Graham... We need to get serious here for a minute because you're not understanding what I'm saying. How are you successful? Are you inviting people? Are people coming because of, you're giving away things? What's going on? How are you getting millions of people to come to these crusades you're putting on? What are you doing? Are you prep, preparing for a year ahead of time? What are you doing? Tell us your secrets. And Billy Graham stops and he looks at him and he says, Prayer! <laughs> because that is the only way we are going to see the power of God go through this country and through our church is if we will get on our face and go to deeper waters than where we are right now. I don't care if you're knee deep. You need to be looking for the depths. We got to be looking for the depths. When we are waist deep in the river, we not only feel the power, but others can begin to see the effects of it. 
You start standing there, and you're trying to keep yourself from moving when you're waist deep. When the river's running, you're moving. You're trying to keep yourself stable, and others are starting to see it. Are you okay? Are you okay? I see you moving around a little bit. Are you all right? They start seeing it. The effects of what's going on inside of you begins to be evident to people outside. Remember, the waters, the spirit, the word, the power is flowing from the church, flowing from the altars. At this level of maturity, you can't hide its effects on your life. But as deep as this level is, it's still not as deep as we can go. Still not as deep as we can go. Ezekiel then realized that the deeper he got... You gotta, if you're writing notes, you need, to tell, you need to write this down. The deeper he got, the more out of control he was. He finally reached a level where the river was in control. He was at the mercy of the river. At the mercy of the river. This is a representation of the deepest spiritual level that we can reach in this life. And here are four reasons why. This is why this level is so important. Number one, when you are this deep, you are beyond your own ability. You can no longer rely on your strength because the river is too strong. When, listen, when you're out in the middle of the ocean and it's deep and you're swimming for your life, you're not in control. No matter how much you think you might be, you're not in control. If you jump in a swimming pool that's eight feet deep and you're only five foot tall, you're out of control. You are doing all you can to stand up, but if you surrender to the water, what happens? You'll drown, right? You're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting when you're in deep water because the the river's too strong for you. Number two, the second reason is when you're this deep, you have ceased to support yourself. You've ceased to support yourself. You can't do it on your own. That's over. Number three, when you're this deep, you have given yourself up to the will of the river. It's the river's will now, not yours. You are 100% surrendered to God and his will for your life when you're that deep. You see, when I'm waist deep, I still got control. My feet are still on the ground, and I'm still moving with it, but I'm able to control it a little bit. But when it gets to where I can't swim anymore or I can't touch the bottom anymore, I am in complete surrender to the river, not myself anymore. Number four, when you're this deep, the will of the river becomes your will. How deep was Jesus in his relationship with God? Think about that. How deep was Jesus? He's sitting in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he says the same thing we, we would say. If... If it's okay, God, to let this cup of suffering pass me by, please do it. Please do it. Because why? Because he's human at that time. And he don't want to hurt. He don't want the pain that he knows he's about to endure. But what he says is, he says it three times. God, let this cup of suffering pass me by. But then at the end, because of the depth that Jesus was in his relationship with God, he said, not my will, but your will be done. This is where God wants you and me to, get, to be. Right in this place where we say, not my will, but your will. No matter what's going on in my life, not my will, but your will. If you want me to go here, if you want me to go into the mission field, if you want me to go to another country, then your will, not mine. you got to be surrendered wholly. There are greater blessings to be experienced when you and I let God lead us to the deeper waters until we are totally submerged. Then we are totally surrendered and totally committed to him. That's where the depth takes us. The idea of revival in the Bible has always been compared to water. Always, look it up. Water coming to a thirsty land. Drink from me, and I will, you'll never thirst again. I mean, there's always that kind of analogy going on, whether it's Jesus or Old Testament prophets talking about it. We know how life-giving water really is. Water is essential. Back in the days of Jesus, water was in short supply. 
So why did he use those analogies? They were, it was in short supply. They had, to, they had to pump wells, and sometimes the wells would run dry. It was in short supply. It wasn't, we couldn't just go grab a bottle of water. We couldn't just go to the gas station and pick up water. It was in short supply, so he uses this for a reason. Ezekiel, in verse 2, it says this, Ezekiel was brought out. He was brought out. This is key because the purpose of the flow of the water from the temple was out. It was out. In Matthew 28, the Great Commission, Jesus says what? Go. He doesn't say stay. He says go. What does that have to do with, with Ezekiel's vision? Why was the water flowing out? Because the church was never intended to keep it all to themselves. The church was never intended for the doors to be locked and sealed up so that the water could fill up in here. The water is continually flowing from the altars, continually flowing from the sanctuary, from the place that we meet with Jesus. It's continually flowing, and we're standing in the middle of it. We can't, we can't swim. We are deep. We're ready to go, but then it continues to go out, and you see a nation changed when the church grabs a hold of what the depths of God looks like. God is always calling us to go out and go with the flow of God's river, His Spirit, the depth increased the further Ezekiel got from the temple because the further out we go, the greater reward. I've said this before, but sometimes the sheep, that's us, eat so much we can't get up. We just sit and we feed and we feed and we feed, not knowing that God has so much more for us. Revival may break out in the sanctuary, but it will be fulfilled in the city. Did you hear that? Revival may break out right here, but it's gonna be fulfilled out there. Jesus told Peter to push the boat into the deep water to get a greater catch in Luke 5. Ezekiel 47 is a journey into God's leading, his heart, and his abundance. The leaves on the trees do not wither, and the fruit does not fail. The freshness is in the fact of connection to the water with the temple as the source. Out of this comes fruit, life, food, and healing. What else did it say? It said the fresh water pushed out the salty water. And wait a minute, but that's not the end. But when the fresh water, when the, the water from the sanctuary touched the salt, life came. There are people dying out there. There are people dying without Jesus. When was the last time you or I, I have to ask myself this too, when was the last time that we shared the water with somebody? When did it happen last? We're like a river that flows into the sea. Our God is without limits. There is no way his depth can ever be exhausted. The question I have for all of us today is what is your capacity to thirst? What is your capacity to thirst? What does that mean? How much stuff are you filling your life with that won't allow any more water to come in? Are we filling our lives so much with other stuff that becomes pollution and causes us to be a swamp rather than the life-giving water that comes from the Spirit of God to pour through our souls and cleanse us just like he was doing with Ezekiel? Where are we at? What is our capacity to thirst? Are you thirsty? God, give me more. Jesus, you said if I come to you, I'll never thirst again. Are we running? Are we running to the altar of God? Even at home, when you're having your personal time, when you're having your prayer time, whatever it looks like, are you running to the altar of the Lord? Are you just spending time going, God, I need this and this, need this and need this. God, touch this area of my life. Touch this area of my life. God, be with this person. Let me pray for my family now. Let me call them all by name. That's great. You need to be doing that. But I'm going to tell you, there has to be one other part of our prayer life that says, God, tie me to the altar and change my life, that the water of life that comes from the sanctuary will flow out of me into other people as I walk life in authority that Jesus has given me. Are we full of everything else that there's no room for the river of God in our lives? 
Are we satisfied with being ankle or knee or waist deep? Are we ready to be drowned, submersed in all God has for us? Just stand to your feet with me this morning. We're going to, just a few minutes, just a, just a little bit, we're going to go back into one last time of worship before we close out and everything. During this time, I'm going to ask you, how deep do you want to go? How deep do you want to be? Are you satisfied with where you're at? If you are, you know what, that's just, we're just going to have to, believe that God's going to keep working on you. And we're going to pray. But if you're here today, say, I'm not satisfied. I need to go deeper. I need to be submerged. I need to be completely overwhelmed with the presence of God. It's coming out of the altar. It's coming out of the sanctuary. So there's two depths depths spoken of. One is the depths that the people will experience when the Spirit of God moves. People that are lost. There may be lost people out there that are just waiting for something, waiting for some kind of hope. And God's saying, I, I got the hope. I'm giving it to my church. You have to take it. And then there's the other depth that says, you know what? My people need to get deeper than they've ever gone before. Because I'm telling you, the world isn't getting any better, and it's not getting any easier, and the church is going to have opposition come against it. And if we produce shallow believers, you're going to be blown away. A fish that lives on the bottom of the ocean doesn't even feel the storm because they're submerged. So this morning, as we, as we go into one last song, I promise you I won't, leave, I won't keep you here all day. Unless you want to stay here all day. During this, as we worship, and as you feel God, as you feel God saying, I'm, I'm speaking to you, he may call you by name. If you don't know Jesus in this room today, he may call you by name. Say, it's time to meet me. It's time to meet me. but I'm opening the altars. I'm opening the place where in Ezekiel's vision, the Spirit of God flows. So step out from where you're at. Find a place if that's you as we go through one, one more song and lay it all down. Give it all to Jesus this morning. Give it all. God, I want to go deeper. God, I need depth. I need to go deeper. I'm tired of being shallow. I'm tired of shallow waters. I need to go deeper. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you need to meet him. I want to talk to you. We need to, we need to talk. We need to get this right. You need to come into that relationship with him. Give it to him. Listen, if you're still out there, you say, well, there's no room up here. Man, move the chairs. I don't care. But let's get with Jesus this morning. Let's watch the depth of God fill this place this morning. Come on, step out from where you're at, church. Thank you for listening. If you would like to learn more about our church or give to our ministry, please visit our website at Bethel.ag.